I've taken on a quest to make a helmet based on the Mandalorian armor. Kyiv district, Ukraine, planet Earth. I've made the cutouts for the halves of the skull. The cutouts will be posted on Patreon. A little bit of magic of the ancient Ukrainians can't hurt to save some cutoff discs. This is the way, and this is stainless steel 2mm thick. I'm hammering the cold details with the 4kg hammer. But we blacksmiths are pretty lazy creatures. So I started doing it handmade once I couldn't be bothered to use this sweet little hammer. The handmade method works, but not exactly, not with everyone, and besides, there are some nuances. And this is the Gauntlet Tristan, the best protection for your little hands. You can see for yourself that such a gauntlet is not only protecting your hand, but can cause a little anxious feeling in the head of your opponent. You can order them on the website, the link will be in the description. I am detaching the excess pieces of the halves of the skull, so that I can put them together. As you can see, the magic of ancient Ukrainians is working excellently. But the shape needs to be corrected. I'll have to do a bit of work. As you can see, I worked for a bit. But you still haven't left a like and subscribe to the channel. This is not the way. After I'm done with the geometry of the skull, I'm doing the final planishing. On the third day of creation, God created the Earth. But I'm an atheist and I created the bottom detail in the second minute of the video. First, I'm shaping it with the help of the press. There is gossip that ordinary Homo sapiens can't regrow limbs. So, this is why you shouldn't put anything in the press beside the detail. I'm correcting the shape a bit after the press and connecting the two parts with screws. This makes it simpler to save the alignment of these two details later with further correcting of the shape. I'm removing the excess. When making the cutouts from scratch, you'll always have the problem of correcting the edges as work proceeds. And I'm correcting the cutouts right away. Up next is the chin. Jesus, don't water into wine once. I'm turning the paper into stainless steel. This is the way. The next steps are quite easy. Chew the detail in the press in the area near the throat. There will be two movable visors in this helmet. This visor needs to be done first. This is how it looks after the press. This is how it looks after the bending. And this is how I look for the blacksmith who came to see the video about how to make the helmet with your own hands, but didn't expect that welding, rising and forging will be really done by hands. Yes, my shyness can be outdone only by the cuteness of Baby Yoda. Up next is the second visor. I'm making a cutout and transforming it into stainless steel. This is the way. I bend the detail in advance and now I'm hammering out a convex shape. The heating of the steel makes the work process a lot easier and faster. I use a propane and oxygen cutter. Once I have a rough shape, I attach the visor to the helmet. As you can see, an excess edge of the visor is sticking out a bit. Well, not anymore. Now you can see the easiest way of aligning the details to one another. We attach them, hit them, hammer them. I pull the edge of the visor to the skull and fixate it with the temporary weld. The fixed edge of the sheet can't be bent in waves and the process of rising is as comfortable as possible. I check the movability of the visor. Everything is in order. I'm changing the shape of the device and adjusting the bottom visor to the helmet. The visor of the Mandalorian helmet has a distinctive T-shaped cutout for vision and breathing. Such a cutout is also present on the medieval helmets that are called barbutes. Pay attention that I welded two bars on the cheek of the visor. This is so that I wouldn't distort from the further planishing and work on the visor. If you don't do it, you'll add a couple of hours of work and a great probability of a crack on the edges of the eye cutout.
The triangular cavity consists of outside and inside ribs. I shape the ribs on a special device and at the same time plenish the area between them. The edges of the gaps on the visor will be reinforced by the cover plate. The increase in thickness will make them stiffer and also make them look better. To do that, I make 4 mm diameter holes and prepare the stainless strip 1 mm thick and 13 mm wide. With the help of screws, I mount the cover plate onto the visor. I am welding the areas of contact with the stainless wire with the further polishing of the seam. This way, the simple stripes will be connected into the one hole shape that would be hard to make one piece. The holes of the bolts are welded on the inside and outside. Also, they are polished with the angle grinder. It's time to remove the temporary bars in the vertical gap, but I've decided that I still have to add one bar that will stay on the finished helmet. Without it, the cheeks of the visor are moving too much and that can lead to the distortion of the symmetry. Usually, the helmet of the Mandalorian has an antenna on the right side, and the medieval helmets often had a mount for a plume. I merged these technical solutions and made a mount for a decoration, but the main goal was to make a support for both visors, so that they would stop in the needed position while closed and the eye gap was directly in front of the eyes. Now I am making the rod for the decoration, it should go in and out. This is why on the lower end there is a narrow part and a small bump. The rod is also stainless. I am starting to work on the decoration. To do this I cut off a strip 3 mm thick and 4 mm wide. I finish the cutting by removing the bars. With the strikes of the hammer I shape the textured surface of the detail. Now the surface is typical of forging by hand. I'm cutting off the details that will be straight. Now I'm checking the proportions of the future shape. Everything is ok. Now I'm bending the needed shape. I'm separating the detail after I'm done with the geometry. It's the most convenient way to hold small details and work with them. The pattern of the future decoration will be intertwined. So I remove half of the thickness in spots of interlacing. And here is the decoration. It's the coat of arms of Ukraine. Officially, this symbol dates back to Kyiv Rus times. But according to alternative history, this is the symbol of the ancient Ukraine reptilians in the times of origin of mankind. But we all have proof before our eyes that the ancient Ukrainians originated from the planet Mandalore. Now it's time to polish all of the details. I'm starting with the discs for the angle grinder. I'm using the petal and velcro discs. The polishing is not perfect, but with the signs of forging by hand. This will make the helmet look authentic. At the end of the work, I use a felt disc and goy paste to achieve a mirror shine. This gap between the visor and the skull is not a slip up. It is elaborately planned. This is exactly how I wanted to make it. So that I can put in a special, very important cover plate there. The thing is, the visor should tightly press to the skull in a closed position. Anyone who doesn't do it is Mr. Clumsy Hands. The next step in my quest is the production of stainless rivets. I reforge a square rod that was left from the coat of arms to be round. Now I'm dividing it into small pieces around 1 cm long. After that I'm riveting one side to shape a simple rivet. On the inside of the skull I'm riveting the strips of leather so that I can attach the helmet liner later. This was method of attachment created by us for the manlings back in the middle ages. It's typical for European helmets starting from the 15th century. Another way of attachment of the liner were just small holes on the edge of the helmet.
This is the way. The inscription on the visor is in the Mandalorian language. Now I'm showing the process of brass plating. To do this, I heat the surface up to 20 degrees. The steel should barely become yellow. And I'm starting to treat the heated area with a brass wire brush. When buying this brush, you need to make sure it's full brass and not steel with a brass coating. This method won't work with a steel brush. I don't really like to sew the helmet liner. It's a very long process and it's boring to film. But the helmet without a helmet liner won't protect. So I'll show you how it's done. This is how it's done. We are at a home stretch to finish the helmet. All that's left is to weld the spots of the temporary screw connections and assemble everything. This is a titanium spring and a cylinder-shaped button for the fixation of the visor in a closed position. The button is stainless. There's a hole in the skull near the edge of the visor and another one for riveting the spring. The helmet liner is sewn in and the helmet is completely finished. Now I need to make a Mandalorian breastplate and shoulders. If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe. If you don't like this content, what the hell are you doing watching it till the end? The answer is simple. You like this content. And here's a list of people thanks to whom this content is so damn well made. A great thank you to the patrons of the channel. During the time of war, I transfer the money that I have collected on Patreon to volunteers for the needs of civilians and our military. Thank you so much for your support during these hard times.